Bay. Chris Grant, Commissioner of the Southland Conference, now joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. And Chris, you guys have been affected. You've added, you've lost, whatever. So basically every conference seems that's the case. Do you feel like this will ever have an end game with you? You know, <laughs> I've been a part of Conference USA, and I know you've been over Clifton and, and Pac-12 and 10. It, it's never an end game when it, and it comes to this and creating better opportunities for our student-athletes. So yeah, is it an end game to conference alignment? No. But at the same time, are you know, our institutions better off for their alignment and the decisions that they're making? I would like to think so from a student-athlete perspective. If you look at, you know, what Impact 12 when I was there, what Utah and Colorado coming a part of the West Coast uh, and being a part of Pac-12, and then same thing with, you know, institutions that, well, they now have elevated their brand and now are moving on from Conference USA. I mean, heck, Cincinnati and UCF at one time and Houston were Conference USA members. And now look at them going into the Big 12. I would like to say, you know, it's arguable that they, they definitely enhanced their student-athlete platform as well as the, for the institution. Chris, with the, I mean, with the changes come, you know, rebranding what you guys are going to be doing and finding your new conference identity. Um, what is that process like to kind of identify what you need to highlight and and make sure the rest of the of the of the athletic world knows it? Well, that's a great question, and, and, and some of what we we focus on is really the stability of our current membership, and then reinvesting in our membership. And, and you mentioned the rebranding, and that's exactly where that idea came from. As I pitched it to our board and have a great group of presidents and athletic directors that are forward thinking, and said, you know, how can we continue being the most dynamic Division One conference, but not rest on our laurels of the past and move forward and being diverse in our collegiate environments, our culture, and celebrating our communities at the same time, but also continue to show our unwavering support for student-athletes. So you mentioned it. The rebrand is first and foremost, and we're in the trenches with that now, working with Troika out of uh, Los Angeles. And it's been great. It's been a, a process where we've been able to identify who we are and kind of that where we want to go and a constant state of activity, and most importantly, how we view ourselves internally and to plan to take that externally. And so, you know, and then from there, you've already seen it, you know, be a successful pitch and what we've been able to do and bring a Lamar back. I mean, another cornerstone of our conference, you know, way back when, now we're in our 60th year. And so we'll celebrate the 60th year, you know, especially with Lamar coming back and you know, McNeese State decided to stay. You know, those institutions, you know, had a vision 60 years ago. And I like to think we're going to carry that forward into our next decade and century and kind of go on from there, you know, with the institutions that have joined us since. But, you know, one thing is, first and foremost, we just, at the time, and I came aboard, coming from conferences that expanded, you know, conferences say we were Huntington to El Paso. And then, of course, in Pac-12, you know, we stretched beyond the West Coast. But, you know, one thing that's great about the South one is celebrating the Gulf Coast region, right? You can't do that enough from, you know, the high period. You know, everything's bigger than Texas and Louisiana. You're always going to have a good time. But I would say the best athletes in the country coming from Texas and Louisiana, and we see it rain true and our, our peers in the SEC and the Sun Belt and the success they're having in American Athletic Conference as well and as the Big 12. So, you know, we want to continue celebrating where we're at regionally and kind of and make sure that not only we're taking care of home, but celebrating those media markets and, and elevating our brand nationally too. Chris, uh, when you first heard the news about Oklahoma and Texas moving to the SEC, uh, do you remember you know, where you were at the time? But I, I guess the, the other part and the, the main part of that question was when you first heard that news, did you realize like, hey, this is going to affect us as well? You know, when I first heard that news, I, mean, I was making the transition from California to Texas. And I was like, whoa, that, I mean, that's big news, right? But at the same time, you, you, you kind of understood where it's coming from, but you didn't understand as I just talked about McNeese and Lamar and what they meant to our conference, kind of being foundational members and thinking of Texas and Oklahoma and what they meant to the Big 12. So at that time, I'm going to be totally honest, I did not think it would be such a triple, trickle-down effect that it has been. And I think someone mentioned yesterday, like 35 schools have changed places or conferences since that all started. And that is just, I mean, that's, hmm. uh, that's crazy. I think that's, that has to be record-breaking in the history of conferences that have been. And so, you know, but and it's no surprise that we've announced this NCAA you know, Transformation Committee and some of what they're doing, great work that committee's doing there, and so many unknowns still. But at the same time, you know, schools are positioning themselves to be successful throughout that transformation. Chris, you mentioned that. It is all about the almighty dollar. And then in some cases, uh, to, to position a, a specific university or a few of them or all of them, who knows, in a better position. In the end, 
Does this concern you about the, the future of not just your conference, but other conferences that they could be left behind? It, it does, you know, man, and I tell you, it's the same thing we're talking about in our commissioner rooms amongst each other and, and bouncing ideas off uh, how we can't, you know, no longer sit back and say, hey, what's happening at the Power Five and Group of Five level? It'll happen and it'll just impact us, how it impacts us. We not have to take the bull by the horn and make our product marketable, right? We also have phenomenal student athletes, and now, you know, more than ever, they're, they're being courted, you know, through the transfer portal. So how can we continue to prepare ourselves not only for that new dynamic, but to move our position, our institutions and our student athletes and coaches to put, be in a position of strength. And so and I, and I think from that, it's really digging back into, I talked to a friend earlier over here, the Frisco Rough Riders and Breon Dennis and, and folks in on, you know, that minor league baseball mentality, right? You know, you don't own any of the players and similar to our school. We don't own anyone at any time they can make a decision, but it constantly goes back to the team on how are you rebranding? How are you researching it? And continue to make that fan experience attractive to that local community. And, and that's what we have to do is tell our story better locally and you know, not only throughout the Gulf Coast, but getting that out. I don't want the first time you're hearing about Corpus Christi to be at the first forward next year, whoever it may be going from our conference. I want that University of New Orleans story being told throughout the season. And we got to figure out what's going to captivate the audiences along the way. How much of us as a conference commissioner, when things like that happen, a team says you're leaving or you know the conference is changing, do you have to kind of get over this is bad news right now and make it good news? Like, what is the benefit to this when a team does, in fact, leave? Yeah, you know, and that's the tough part. Cause it, none of these decisions are personal. I think you, and talking with our president, it, it's a total understanding with members have left us. It's like, hey, we want to do what's best for our institution right now. And, you know, and, and things change, right? And you get that. And so I, I try to remember that. Of course, you take the gut punch, but, you know, and that old Mike Tyson ad is right. Everything is good. So you get punched in the mouth and it's like, true. We, we take some punches and it hurts. But at the same time, it's on us as commissioners to prepare our membership with that positive messaging going forward. Because just like some of what we told me, say, hey, you don't have to look at another SDS. Your, your ambition is to go SDS football. Hey, come here, be stay a part of our conference and do great things. And then we'll continue to do business at a higher level, even though we're SDS. We're going to elevate our brand through you and through others in our league and step it up so that at least operationally, we're, we're looking like an FBS conference. We might not be resourced like one, but we also want to compete with the big dogs in, in this space. Chris, there is a uh, it's, you need to do it if you're an FCS school, Southland Conference, or any others. They play Power Five schools. They go travel, play at a bigger stadium or not. Baylor's hosted Sam Houston State. They've hosted SFA. They've hosted others as well along the way. Is it you need those games as a member of the Southland Conference to help with the athletic budget, but also knowing most likely you're not going to win them? You know, you, you do, but it's also that pursuit uh, of competition, mm -hmm. right? We, we're never going to back down. And I think for years, we, you know, we celebrate that underdog mentality almost to a point where we go into some of these games expecting to win. I think our coaches are, you know, are very strategic in scheduling games and they're going to schedule opponents knowing, like, yes. Yeah, Financially, this is helping our athletic department, our student athlete experience, and do, let them do some things creatively with their uh, program. But at the same time, they're positioning themselves to win the games. I think with the transfer portal, a lot of folks are talking about you know the FCS being plus and then you know kind of re having to restructure. But sometimes it's kind of positive coming out of it that you know some folks that maybe slip through the cracks or maybe that get that playing time at a power five or group of five institution are coming back down too and having a chance to start right away and really make a big contribution. So, you know, at the same time, yes, we love the payday, and, and that's great for our institutions to be able to do more things with resources. But I think we're investing in the advancement of our student-athletes to compete, you know, not only in life, but definitely on these big platforms. And, and more than anything, we love the television exposure uh, and just being good peers, you know, to our big power fives and group of five uh, colleagues. As you know, the college football playoff is looking to expand. My God, it might take forever because it looked like they were on the cusp a year ago, and we know it's been slowed down or in some cases in mud because of, I guess, egos or what's best for whoever and what conferences. How important is it that the expansion, if it goes to what people might think of 12, Chris, that at least one FCS champion or group of five team is part of that mix as, a, as an automatic qualifier? You know, I, I think just, just for, you know, you talk about equality and providing experience. I think, you know, hey, the, the people want to see what really is. Is it parity? Or is it just opportunity? So I would like to think, you know, I watched Sam Houston State, not only when they won the national championship, but this year in the playoffs, 
Like, you know, comps just say they're bringing them in for a reason and to compete at a high level. It's no expectation. Everyone come in and just lay down every team they face. And I also like to think, I mean, hey, you got North Dakota State up there, right? We, we have some people we run into and in James Madison. Uh, of course, Liberty coming in and now from FCS. Or I guess they were FBS, but James Madison just being an FCS playoff. I, I, I do think they can compete at that level. Now, you know, putting into the playoffs, those are the, the elite of the elite. But I think we owe it to our student athletes provide that opportunity. And at the bare minimum, I think what we're thinking as FCS commissioners is, you know, how do we carve out a space amongst that structure infrastructure of the CFT and, you know, and compete and provide another platform. Now, we currently have the playoff, and it's been working very well, and it's great. Some call it the North Dakota State Invitational, and I'm always on our athletic directors and coaches, like, hey, we want that ring, we want to bring it back, and luckily we were able to win that championship at the Southland Conference two years ago. But at the same time, you know, look, we, we also want to be, you know, again, great peers to our Power Five and Group of Five folks. And then, you know, so what does that look like going forward? Can we, you know, I guess assist in the message, you know, what it looks like to run a, a, a successful playoff in the competition, but, you know, maybe do it in a, in a different manner and what we're currently doing it now. So I think all things are on the table along the way. And I trust knowing a lot of the commissioners that are in that room, they're, they're thinking about it all, you know, basically what's best for the ecosystem as well as what's best for their conferences independently. And I just hope and pray maybe they carve out a space for us too. Uh, Chris, can you and some of the other FCS conference commissioners like go to the like uh, playoff expansion meetings and translate what you do to them? Because I think it's kind of like a language barrier thing. It keeps getting caught up. <laughs> You're right. And it's funny you said that. We actually we're meeting here uh, next like two weeks from now, uh, asking all 32 commissioners, and so it will be interesting. Now we won't be a part of their CFP conversations, but I, I think it will. You know, it already has been. You know, the people picking our brain, asking us how we're getting things done at the, you know, with at this level. But I tell you, the, the dollars don't make the same sense as it does at that level either in our, in our current NCAA playoff structure. But I think you're right. You know, you can look. And the, the best thing about SCS, we, we, you know, we're gonna rise to the challenge. But I do think we're united as one and uh, really relying on that amateurism model. Uh, what that looks like, you know, the pay for play model and student athletes being employees isn't something that we're, we're currently interested in as a Southland Conference. I don't want to speak for others. But at the same thing, same time, we want to be able to amplify their voices. And as I tell our, our members, hey, we're always going to go for two. Do everything we do with extra flair, <laughs> boldness, confidence, and celebration along the way. As an SFA uh, a graduate alum, I, I, I do have a lot of, uh, of course, memories of the Southland Conference. I know things have changed dramatically, including them and Sam Houston State, among others. Chris, uh, very impressive. Uh, love your motivation. I love your, your, your uh, drive and, your, heck, your transparency and honesty as well. Yeah, no, thank you. And yesterday was great being down there at Cal. I saw you all set up. Look, I, I, I took the hint. You all didn't want me in front of the cameras. I have a no! face for radio. I get it. Hey, look, you, you, you reserved me. But look, I, at least I got to see you all in action. And yeah, hey, really appreciate everything you all are doing, you know, not only for college sports, but for Baylor right there in the backyard. I mean, what Mac has built there is phenomenal and, and the rest of his staff. And I look forward to going down to catch some games with some of our off weekends. All right. We're gonna, we got a graphic up, by the way, as you're on the air, and your face is right smack in the middle of it. So what you you are, you are just fine. It's a great, great That's picture. Great. The, the, the red tie really pops. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah you look good. Yeah, great, great smile. Uh, right. Let's color that green on today while we're on this, on this stage. Hey, hey, Chris, thanks for your time. Thank you for being at Baylor yesterday and that Cal event that they put on it was fantastic to see you and others and we will absolutely be in touch as well down the road thanks for your time well thank you all. i look forward to keeping in touch and have a uh, great weekend you too chris grant and some of you on the chat room saying the same thing about impressed with him and how positive he is and you have to be uh, they know what they're up against he knows what they're up against the schools in the conference know what they're up against and so do some of the others even power five schools and conferences as well and this is Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. Riverman Liquor and Wine.